Hi babies, I'm back in my mobile pulpit. I like it here. And here's my contemplation for the day. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it is glorious. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it is glorious. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it is glorious. So I have given a lot of thought. The Holy Ghost has met me in the midst of a lot of imaginations today. And I am considering uh, the birds <laughs> that don't toil or reap, that flutter around, and um, specifically resources. It's like we are participating in some sort of economy. And I know that our limited scope, according to the patterns of this world, have left us uh, pretty constrained concerning our participation in economy. But baby, your, 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 your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, and they are glorious. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Behold, the birds of the air have nests, and the foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his rest. Could it be that the scope of the perception of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, was so broad that, I mean, this, this is the same one speaking that made covenant with David. said, you want to build me a house? The heaven and the heaven and the heavens can't contain me. So, there are birds that have nest holes, and birds, there are foxes that have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So, Jesus comes to the point where he admonishes everyone, consider those birds. Doesn't your father provide for them? Don't they have their their little economy and their little ecosystem that they're just so happy fluttering around in? Don't you have a an economy? Don't you have a an access to resources where that you can be just as happy? So there's shelter and and there's food and there's time. These are all resources. Jesus said, what is, uh, what is my food except to do the will of him who sent me? So, I mean, there, there is even a, an aspect of fortification, of nourishment, of sustenance. That is apart from livestock and cattle and the agricultural um, infrastructure of the world that we live in. It's like he was so persuaded that there was a task to perform. He was so persuaded that the revelation that he had of the things that his father was doing, that he would do also. The things that he uh, heard his father saying, he would say also. And there was nothing restricting. There was no resource that was withheld from him. But it wasn't according to necessarily sitting and supping. there's time and I think of uh, the moment in the boat on the Sea of Galilee when um, the disciples were fretting that there was such a tumult and Jesus was walking on the water and he happened upon them in the middle of the Sea of Galilee him on foot above the waves and them relying upon the buoyancy of a a, a a vessel for the sea. Jesus wasn't relying on the buoyancy of the the vessel of the sea. He he 
walk the waves. And then he got into the boat. And it says that it immediately was on the, their desired haven. It was attained unto immediately. As soon as he got on the boat. There's a rift in the time-space continuum somehow. If you want to contextualize it in some sort of language of physics. He had mastery over time. They were immediately at their destination. So, it's just really resounding within me that as we engage haste, as we whore our time for corporations, as we fret over the economic markets that we rely on for substance, for our livelihood, for nourishment and nutrition, as we can say, oh, am I going to have a place to stay? I need a roof over my head. Well, baby, babies, your, your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if, if you become enlivened by the spirit of revelation to exactly how far these dimensions progress from this meager understanding of your biological and anatomical frame, and you understand that the, the, the scope of who you are in Christ exceeds this paltry economy, there is an ecosystem. There is a heavenly ecosystem. There is a habitation. Your father is the ancient of days. So how could it be that you could be subject to time yourselves? It's in, it's in your heritage that you should have dominion over time. Like Jesus transporting the disciples in that boat to the far side of that, the Sea of Galilee, immediately. I'd say that there is an elevation of thought that's incumbent upon us in these times as we are wringing our hands about resources and consider the mastery that Christ had over all of this and consider that you are in Christ and he is in you and that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew this and that's why he was able to walk as he walked with mastery over the elements. And he said that that these works that you see me do, you will do even greater than these. Imagine an entire company of people on the earth. Jesus is the, is the firstborn among many brethren, an entire company of the upright upon the earth that are manifesting mastery over all the elements. My babies, your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and it is glorious. And it surpasses these restrictions, these deceptions, this darkness that the liars and the rulers of this age have constrained. They, they constrained our minds and our thoughts and our imaginations into such a meager and narrow vein. You can't contain this. The seed of the ancient days is in you. The seed of the ancient of days is in you. You cannot contain this. What's inside's coming out? What's inside's coming out? Don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. 